Costa Rica's deadliest snakes coming up. Subscribe now. Bangs in your face. Hey guys, before we get started, I want to thank everybody, all my generous supporters right here on this list. Hey, thank you guys so much for your support to Venom Central. It means the world to us. You guys actually keep the wheels turning over here. Believe it or not, it's a big help. Hey, and everybody who bought the t-shirts, they came out just spectacular. We are ecstatic with them. Um, there's still some available, but I think they're running out of some certain sizes. So if you haven't got one, jump over to Teespring and grab a Gaboon shirt. And the new shirt is out. The, uh, the Puff Adder shirt, and it's smoking. So check out the new shirt also. What's up, Venom Squad? Hey, today this is gonna be a good one, guys. Um, hey, Costa Rica, I mean, that is a popular go-to vacation spot. I mean, it's probably one of the most beautiful countries in the world. But let me tell you, you know, we, we get on snake bite stuff. We read everything about it. We are just so interested in, in, in the numbers and, and fatality numbers and er everything to do with envenomations and venom. But anyways, now, Mr. Clodomir Picado, right? The, one of the all-time greats. This man wrote a book in, in the early 30s, right? And back then, he was recording anywhere from 10 to 13 deaths a month, okay? A month in Costa Rica, and they were all attributed to Bothrop's Asper. The Terciapello, okay? The Bothrops, of course. And now literally, snake bite down there is, is it, it's not a big problem anymore. I mean, these guys have it so in control that it's, it's, I mean, the World Health Organization is sharing Costa Rica's model with all these other third world countries to actually help these other countries get their game together when it comes to snake bite because Clodomir Picado Institute has put things in place down there with the anti-venom production and the education and the outreach programs, all the great stuff that they do. It's taken Costa Rica to, I mean, literally now back in the, back in the thirties, it was a population of, I think like 500,000. Okay. With 10 to 13 something snake bite deaths a month. Now it's a population of 5 million and it's down to one to two a year. That's incredible. That is incredible. I mean, that's awesome. And antivenom, it's gratis. It's like, and, and, and the healthcare, if you get bit, antivenom, it's free. They take care of their people. Awesome. I, I love Costa Rica. I mean, that's, that's just badass in my eyes. But let me tell you now, with the snakes of Costa Rica, okay, there's, man, I can't remember. It's 140 or maybe 143 snake species but there's 23 of them which are venomous, okay? And bites down there, it's all coming. I mean, of course, they're, they're lower limb and higher limb, okay? But the bites, 40 to 50% are all bothrops, are all asper, the terciopello. And because we all know he's a big mean son of a bitch, right? <laughs> but, but the thing is, is now the other 50% of bites, okay, it, it, it's, it, it's attributed to, you know, the... The, the Costa Rican rattlesnake, which is second only to the damn Bushmaster when it comes to toxicity. And of course, you know, you got your lachesis, your Bushmasters, your little hognose vipers, your jumping vipers, but your other highest number comes into play with all of your little arboreal stuff, all your little buff rockies, okay? Your little eyelash vipers and the little lateralis and all that stuff. And it's coming from workers, um, you know, working in the coffee plantations and stuff like that. So, you know, just picking stuff and getting popped by the little the most shits you know what i mean so but this video is, is about the numbers and it's gonna we're gonna hit on hit on some of the deadliest snakes according to you know of course venom and and all of that but we're gonna hit on the snake that actually causes the most damage down there you know and of course we can't leave out your coral snakes your macraris now and there is so many different species of coral snake down there, it's it's mind-boggling. But let me tell you, um, and that and it's a true lapid, and that is a damn very venomous snake. I mean, it's 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 truly a dangerous snake. But the point is, front fixed fangs so little, they rarely come in contact with people. Bites are less than two percent. So it's it's really way down there, and deaths are like pretty much like nothing. 
okay? But the Bothrop's Asper, the Turf Apello, he's the bad guy in this program. <laughs> okay, to start out, guys, of course, the Bothrop's Asper, the Turf Apello, the Ferdinand's, it's, it's definitely responsible for anywhere from 46 to 50 percent of snake bite in Costa Rica. But this is a medically significant snake. And, and let me tell you, um, it's, uh, there's a drug that was it's derived from Bothrop's Asper venom. And it's, uh, it's Batroxabin, I think. But, you know, this guy's medically significant, as dangerous as he is. So, <laughs> but, and of course, a lot, of, a lot of your ACE inhibitor drugs are derived from Bothrop's venom. Say, like, um, the Captopro is, was from Nigeria Rocca. But anyways, enough of that boring stuff. Now, the Asper is responsible for a lot of bites because he literally inhabits 50 to 60% of Costa Rica. This guy is found everywhere. I mean, he can be found in agricultural areas. He can be found in, I mean, damn near in towns. I mean, these snakes are, they're really prolific. They have a lot of babies. I mean, it's not unheard of for a big Bothrops Asper female to have 50, 60 babies. I mean, that's pretty much the norm with a, with a big one. And the thing is with, with Asper, they get large. Now, I have a lot of experience with Aspers. I've dealt with a bunch of them, okay? And let me tell you, a large female Asper is pretty formidable. I mean, I'm talking seven, eight foot, this big around, and with a bad attitude. These snakes don't tolerate any kind of handling. They're flighty, and they're very defensive. And just like you've, if you've all watched some of my Bothros videos, you see how the Mugenai are. We, we don't have a Bothros Asper for this video. I'm not working with Asper at this moment, but I'm sure we will be again in the future. <laughs> but, you know, we've got Monster Leia Chorus, which is very close to an Asper. Um, we've got the Mugenai. We've got, we've got several different Bothrop species, but Aspers take the cake when it comes to attitude. And everybody thinks like, oh, well, all snakes are just defensive. Aspers are one of them snakes that will bite you out of sheer meanness, okay? <laughs> snakes all have their own little personalities. Trust me, they really do. And it can be by individual. I've had Aspers that were kind of calm, but you go in there after dark and they're like grease lightning. Anything that moves, they'll reach out and pop at it. And that's the same way a lot of our Bothrops are here. These snakes are... Yes, they're pit vipers, and they're using them heat sentry pits to locate prey items, but they're also big sight hunters. That's why a lot of bites are attributed to the Bothrops, especially the Asper. Anything that moves, they're reaching out and laying fangs down on it immediately. And it's because they're good sight hunters and pit vipers. But let me tell you something. A bite from an Asper would be so traumatic that it's not even funny because the venom is so highly necrotic that a lot of people that suffer bites from Bothrops, especially in Asper, the secondary infection is the big problem. So you're bound to lose a limb, have very bad tissue damage, and it's, it's no freaking joke, okay? <laughs> but Asper, Bothrops Asper, number one on the list for these guys. This guy does the most damage in Costa Rica, but with Clodomir Picados, Beautiful setup that they have. I mean, any venom down there, this is this is what I love. Any venom, it's complimentary. It's free. They set it up where the healthcare and any venom and all the stuff for snake bites is is at no cost. I mean, they take care of their country. I I love Costa Rica, and let me tell you, it's it, it, it's the model that they have put in place to actually they do all these outreach programs to teach people about these animals and where they can be found, where they can be seen, um, how to identify, what to do in case of a bite. And they spread it out across Costa Rica. I mean, it's awesome. It really is. And a lot of other countries are modeling their whole programs after Costa Rica's. And that's all because of Vladimir Picado. I mean, that place is the bomb. You've got a better chance of catching Gerardia of, you know, or, or a damn bot fly <laughs> down there, then you got, you're in a higher chance of getting like microorganisms attacking your body than a venomous snake. And that's the truth of it. I mean, because, 
I mean, if you accidentally drink some water down there that's infected or, or some, some junk of water, you can get Gerardia. You can, there's all kinds of different microorganisms that can attack the human body. And I mean, botfly. A buddy of mine got botfly. <laughs> it was the craziest thing. I mean, there was like a maggot coming out of a hole in his arm and sticking his head out and going back in. I mean, totally disgusting. But snake bite in Costa Rica is under control. They've got it handled. But it's really cool. Hey, we're going to link to Clodomir Procato's site with a lot of their stuff. And it's great educational stuff. I suggest you guys go back there and read it. Especially if you're going to Costa Rica. If you're planning a, a, an eco tour or something about Costa Rica, read all this stuff. I mean, educate yourself. It's neat stuff. 50% of the bites down there are, of course, lower limb. And, and like the other 50% is higher limbs, is, is, is face area, arm area. And it's because, of course, on the ground, you're going to find all of your, you know, like your little jumping vipers, your hognose pit vipers, you know, the, um, of course, your terciopelos, your, your, and Bushmaster, of course, which we'll get into that one. But you got to think about, there's a lot of arboreal snakes that are venomous. And Costa Rica's got some really neat little arboreal pit vipers, all of your Bothrikis, you know, your Schleglii, your Lateralis, there's, and there's some neat ones down there. And um, so a lot of bites were like from Lateralis. And, and I'll tell you, it, it's because of a lot of workers and, and their agricultural eras, most bites are attributed, they're, they're males that are working on the coffee plantations and things like that. So, you know, they're working and they're getting popped by a lateralis or by a schlag. So, you know, that's the encompasses the rest of the bites. But the bad ones, of course, are the damn bothrops, are the the terciopelos. But with a death rate that is down to one or two a year fatality rate, that's amazing. But we're going to start out with some, we're, we're going to bust out some schlags and show you some different color phases of eyelash vipers and show you their little attitudes that they have, <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay, and one of our snakes that actually is responsible for quite a few bites in Costa Rica, according to everybody's studies that went on down there, is your Bothrikis. Now, these are all your little arboreal pit vipers, okay? And there's some cool ones down there. I mean, there is some neat little arboreal pit vipers. I mean, we've got the Schlegley Eye, of course, and this is a green eye green phase eyelash viper and they come in a bunch of different colors i mean this is a very popular snake in the venomous snake hobby i mean and we've got a bunch of them we breed them but there are several different species of these bothrakis down there okay i mean we've got the schlegley eyes we've got the superciliaris which is kind of a subspecies of the eyelash viper it's a neat very neat snake um the uh the lateralis Okay, it's responsible for a lot of bites on coffee plantations and things like that. Uh, the Nigro Viridis. I mean, there's some cool stuff down there. <laughs> but the eyelash is one of my favorites. And I'll tell you, this guy is arboreal. This is the threat that's chest level and hand level and face level, okay? I read a, um, I read an article several years ago of a, of a woman that was bitten on the tongue. Somehow the snake managed to bite her on the tongue or the lip. I was trying to translate the article, but, and, and, and she perished from it. It was very sad. I mean, I, I think she was working and somehow the snake was not seen, but it ended up managing to somehow bite her on her lip or her tongue, but it, it killed her. It was just crazy. And what a lot of people don't understand is this snake is a little more venomous than everybody thinks, even though bites are rarely fatal. It is documented fatalities with the Bothraki Shalegla. So this snake has caused fatalities, but it's accredited to a lot of bites. It, it, it causes quite a few bites, along with the lateralis and a few of the other little arboreal species down there. But they come in a bunch of colors. Yeah, this is what we call the Christmas phase or the green phase. The, the cool ones are the yellow ones. These are the ones that I love too. Um, they're called an oracle. They call them horrible because they're bright yellow. I, I just happen to have one right here in the bucket. We're going to pick one up here. There we go. And this guy, that's the horrible. And this was a male. You can see, he's quite a bit smaller than her. Let's see if I can get him to sit there. And he's a snappy little booger, okay? 
he'll bite you in a heartbeat. <laughs> and just like I said, all snakes have their own personalities. This snake's a sweetheart, but this one will bite you in a damn flash. It's a mean little booger. Okay, let me set him right there. He'll find his way up there. There we go. Get on there, chubby boy. That's one of our little breeders. But they come in a bunch of different colors, and a lot of people wouldn't know how to identify them because they're they're so variable. I mean, they're green. They can be red. They can be yellow. I mean, we've got a black one. We produced a black one last year. Um, but this snake is responsible for quite a few envenomations in Costa Rica. And it needs to be taken seriously because it is a little more venomous than y'all think. Okay? But with anti-venom and proper care, its bites are rarely, rarely fatal anymore. So that's the good thing. Okay, and for our next animal, I'll tell you, um, this is a ground level threat animal. Of course, is your Crolocimus. This is a species of the tropical rattlesnake that hails from Costa Rica. Now, this animal, even though it's not uncommon, it's not accountable for a big number of bites because this snake, it really inhabits a drier habitat. And most people that actually go down to Costa Rica to visit, of course, they want to go right to the rainforest, you know. So, but this animal, he, I mean, he, he's normally encountered on the edges of primary forest, you know. He's, he, he likes that undisturbed forest, you know. And we call it the scenes, kind of the edges of habitats, you know. But here's the thing. This animal is second only to the Bushmaster when it comes to potency okay for Costa Rica this animal is a hot son of a bitch all right this this is a kill bite and bites that go untreated by a Crolocimus is I mean you're done that's that there's there's no two ways about it this snake has a I mean mild toxic hemotoxic but the big one is it's got a big neurotoxic component to its venom and I'm not going to get into venom. I can talk for hours about venom, but but this guy has a really high potency of neurotoxic available at his disposal. So, but it's not a gnarly snake. It's not. It's not nowhere near as aggressive as as say your your Bothrop species, which of course your your Bothrop's Asper. He's accountable for most of the bites down there. But still, this snake has the capability of a kill bite. So this is one you'll need to be aware of, okay, if you're visiting Costa Rica. But like I said, it's not uncommon, but it's very possible you can come across one of these. And I'll tell you, um, beautiful animal. I mean, just majestic, beautiful rattlesnake. They're one of my favorite rattlesnakes. And potency is next to none. It's a hot son of a bitch. <laughs> And I'll tell you another thing with this is you got to realize that, I mean, this snake's actually becoming popular in, uh, in U.S. collections. And I'm going to tell you, Crofab's not going to work with this. I very seriously doubt it. This animal requires a special antivenom. It requires the polyvalent that is made by Clodomero Picado. I mean, because it's, it's literally a specialty animal. This guy has so many different components in its venom that I don't think Crofab can handle this. So for American keepers, um, I would suggest getting the proper antivenom for your neotropical rattlesnakes. Um, we house it, we keep it, we keep a pretty good stock of it. But, cause I, I, I breed all these things. Um, my favorite rattlesnake species, I love all the Simmons stuff, all your Central American rattlesnakes. But this is a Mojave rattlesnake on steroids. Um, another ground level threat, of course, is your hognose vipers, your porthidium species. And there's there's three to four subspecies of them, okay? And actually, we used to breed a couple of them. We, I mean, this was back 20 years ago. They were, they were like, easy to get. We used to produce them, and, and they were literally, like, they, they were just an easy snake, and nobody wanted them. Now they're pretty important. I mean, you can't get them no more, and I wish I had what I, now what I had back then. <laughs> The last but not least, now mind you, there's a bunch of different venomous species down there, but these are the ones that kind of hit the mark. These are the ones that are kind of, everybody knows about, 
And let me tell you, uh, the jumping vipers, they're neat. That's a cool, we used to call them poor man's Bushmasters because we used to be able to get them fairly inexpensive. And there's a couple subspecies of them. Um, the, the subspecies that is endemic to Costa Rica is the Mexicanus, in which there are a few others. And like, like the ones from Mexico are called nummifiers, which the damn taxonomists need to get on that. Okay, because they ain't got it right. They got it backwards now. <laughs> but anyways, we used to call them poor man's Bushmasters because they resemble a Bushmaster. They don't get nowhere near the size, but they're they're kind of they, they look like a little mini Bushmaster. I mean, they are definitely cool, heavy body, big gnarly heads on them, heavily kilted scales, and they do really well in captivity. But um, but we're gonna move on, guys, and we're gonna break out what we think is the most dangerous snake in Costa Rica when it comes to toxicity, um, temperament, and all all that this encumbers. I mean, literally, the Bushmaster is the biggest, baddest boy on the block. And another snake on our list for Costa Rica's deadliest, of course, is the Bushmaster, the Lechisa species. Now, there's two species of Bushmaster that reside in Costa Rica, okay? Now, this is the Lachesis stenotris, and the other one is the Lachesis melanosophila, the black-headed Bushmaster, okay? Now, the odds of you being bit by a Bushmaster are slim to none, okay? This snake is so secretive. This snake lives in such undisturbed habitat that it's rarely found. It truly is rarely found. Uh, this one literally is being studied now pretty intensively. Um, they're actually being radio tracked, so they're finding out more and more about them. Now, we breed this species pretty readily here in captivity here at Venom Central, but this animal literally is a two-year-old, okay? <laughs> and we've got specimens that are much bigger, okay? I mean, this, this is a youngster. This is a young animal. But the bigger ones right now, most of them are in blue, and a lot of them are just getting paired up for breeding right now, so we're not going to disturb them. And this snake doesn't do good getting stressed, okay? So we handle them as least as possible. We don't like to disturb them. We kind of leave these guys alone. But what makes this guy so damn dangerous, I mean, sure, bites are, are, are really, really rare. But when a bite does occur, it's a 92% fatality rate, okay? That's high. I mean, that's right up there with a the mamba, okay? I mean, this guy is a serious player. And... The sheer amount of venom in a bite, along with its crazy toxic venom, is deadly. It's deadly. And this snake is a serious, serious player. This boy is not playing, <laughs> okay? Now, this species of Bushmaster, the Lachesis stenophrys, this guy, he held on the Caribbean side, okay? And he's a little more widespread than your black-headed Bushmaster, your Lachesis melanosophila. Now, the melanosophila's smaller range and even harder to find. I mean, these guys are primary forest animals. They are so secretive. They spend a great deal of their time in animal burrows during the day, and they're highly nocturnal. But this is the animal that is the most feared out of all of them down there. Even though the Bothros asper is accountable for 50 to 60% of the bites in Costa Rica, this guy probably gets blamed for most of them. <laughs> when actually, this guy is rarely if ever encountered. They're just that secretive and that rare to find. But you can see the sheer size of this animal. And this is a youngster, okay? This is a very young animal. This happens to be a young male. And he's already, he's six foot, okay? I mean, for me to find this animal in the jungle, would be a dream come true, <laughs> okay? I would love to find a, a wild Bushmaster, especially a Melanosophila, a blackhead. But to be able to work with these things in captivity and do what I do with them, I mean, we breed these things pretty steady, okay? We've been very successful reproducing with Jesus and uh, it's it's just a sheer joy to be around this animal. I mean, they are just so majestic. They're so damn dangerous. <laughs> so, you know, you... You, you learn to appreciate this animal for what it is, for what it truly is. It is truly an icon of the rainforest. 
Well, we're gonna put this beautiful boy back where he belongs. We don't wanna keep him out too long. We don't wanna stress him out. This is one of them animals that doesn't do very well being stressed. And we do have Melanosophila, but we're not gonna bust one of the big ones out today. We don't handle them unless it is absolutely necessary. And we try to film it when we're doing it. <laughs> so, you know, unless we're weighing them or doing something with them. Let me tell you, um, we try not to stress these animals out. That's, that's our main goal. So we're going to pop some pictures in there of the blackheads. <laughs> That is one hell of a Bushmaster right there. Hey, if you guys want to see some really neat, I mean, beautiful videography of some of these Costa Rican species in the wild, check out Living Zoology on YouTube. I mean, I follow them and watch all their stuff. They, they just do just outstanding video work of animals in the wild. It's just, it's beautiful. And I mean, to see them in their natural habitat like that, it's, it's gorgeous. But uh, check them guys out. They, just, they were just in Costa Rica. They did some pretty cool stuff. But hey, with Vladimir Picado producing 130,000 vials of anti-venom a year, you got better odds of getting run over by a damn lawnmower here in the States than you do of dying from a snake bite in Costa Rica. Okay, so enjoy your all's vacation down there. <laughs> it's it's actually one of the safest places when it comes to snake bite. They have their game tight down there. <laughs> but anyways, hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Come on back to Venom Central. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, all of that stuff. Hit that V logo thing and come on back and check us out. This is Willie. We're checking out later.